Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening, people in Cameroon, people in Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, um, basically everywhere on the continent. Uh, today is 23rd October 2018, exactly one day after the serious demonstration at Kia University, that's Kwame Krumah University of Science and Technology, by the students led by Katanga and Continental Kunti Power. Uh, we are continuing with our videos. I've been doing a lot of late. Uh, it all about the guitar entrepreneurship but occasionally i do switch a bit to discuss as, let me say it issues that are interest to me but i'm sure it's of interest to a lot of people too and uh, today i was on facebook and um, i saw a message so a message unfortunately uh, Sometime now my net has been slow, so I'm not sure I can retrieve the exact message. But it all talked about, um, I think a video the person watched about uh, artificial intelligence, and it was presented by uh, Jack Ma of Alibaba film where like basically he said, let's say in Let's say Alibaba for six, let's say in the next um, 30 years, machines will be intelligent than human beings. Let me put it that way. In the next 30 years, we are in 2018, so by the next 30 years, machines or the computers will be more intelligent than human beings. And let's say to basically take over the ocean machines will basically take over the ocean my old job people do like machines will take over and a whole lot about 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 uh, intelligent machines machines that have intelligence and there was another part of the post to that say like the next 30 years everything of work or like the key work the people who will be rich are people who can work with data they will be the richest people they say in the next 30 years if you can work with data then forget it it's like you are feeding the it will not be more anymore like installing windows like fixing hard disk networking to computers uh, formatting like uh, unlocking the IT will go beyond that the IT will basically data like it's actually called the data technology data technology we are now in the information technology and we are gradually moving into data technology and what brought about this Digital technology is uh, what is called mm, call it inter yeah, so in, internet of things and what internet of things basically means is everything around us will be producing data everything that comes to your mind around you will be producing data the ring you are wearing will be producing data. The food you are eating will be producing data. The glass of cup you drink from will be producing data. Your washroom will be producing data. Your bed will be producing data. Your door handle will be producing data. Your roofing sheet will be producing data. Like your brush, everything you can think of will be producing data. And producing data, what I mean is, 
for example if you take the brush let's say you pour some paste on it if you put it in your mouth you will remove and look at it you will be able to see a graph of how healthier your teeth is or maybe you can see if there is a bacteria they will be like bacteria yes um, scent no so like you it will have that you will have that information from your tooth uh, your brush if you pour let's say water into a cup you're about to drink you can look at the glass and then it will say well there is 20 percent of acid in it there is 10 percent of uh, calcium in it there is two percent of this then it will give a summary don't drink it or it's not good for people below 20 years it wasn't written there but as soon as you pour it in it it will tell you let's say if you pour wine in it and it's guinness then the bottle will say no this alcohol is not for you because automatically the, the glass knows your age to do not even say it's not good for people below 18 you just pour the glass and, and the alcohol in it and it will tell you this is not good for your age don't drink it you 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 enter into the washroom maybe you're trying to bath you you switch maybe you want hot water then the water will tell you no or like there will be a message like well the weather is not good for this water so then it automatically to tell you maybe change automatically to change to a suitable type of warmness that would be good for you and uh, come on it's something crazy but that is how uh, <laughs> science is looking at the data world literally everything you're producing data yeah, so there will be too much data to deal with and that is what brings about the idea of data technology and so there is enough information the one who will be able to analyze this data he will be the richest person literally so that is what jack ma uh, talk about so that post is uh, what triggered today's video of the idea that very soon machines will be intelligent than people like computers will be smarter than us um and a whole lot of nonsense that we normally hear from uh, people who are actually not in the sciences or so like um people who are a bit far away from computer if the computer is able to sum 5,000 or 1 million rows, let's say in Excel, and then uh, in two minutes you calculate some and it gives you the figure. They say, Wow, this computer is intelligent. And because it did it faster than human being, they think the computer is actually faster than uh, intelligent than human being. So that is uh, basically what I want to talk about today. And the to start with, uh, in the field of computer, or like the branch of computer that is trying to make devices or like machines as intelligent as human beings, don't actually know what intelligent is. That branch of science that is know what intelligent is. The branch of intelligence. A branch of computer science that is trying to design computers to behave like human beings or to think like human beings or to be intelligent as human beings they don't actually know what human intelligence is so that is a first of all a huge barrier let's say for example if you are to let's say design a a device that should behave like a cat and you don't know what a cat is how can you design the device to behave like a cat you can't first of all you have to know what a cat is if you know what a cat is then you can design something to behave like a cat uh, there's one professor uh, I think in US 
New York. I've forgotten what they call it, but he's a theoretical physicist. It's called Kaku. I think it's a um, Michio Kaku, Professor Michio Kaku. Very strong physicist. Very, very strong. Uh, this is the man who is bold enough to say, We made the internet. <laughs> He's very proud of that. that they physicists, they made the internet. So literally everything that's going on in the internet, he is aware of. And he is aware of in the deep level, not like we here. And I once watched his video and he said something very interesting. That that is funny to they the physicists. That people say, wow. These pieces are making a computer that will uh, work like the human brain. And that is what we are saying that these pieces are making computer that will work like human brain. And he he gave the same argument that first of all they don't even know what the human brain is. Like how can they make a computer that behave like human brain? Like, just like the example I said, you don't know what a cat is. How can you design? A computer to behave like a cat you have to know what a cat is first so that is never true like that in the next possible future they can design a computer like that will, will be working like the human brain because they don't even know how they this is the, the, the scientists that deal with the human brain or like they don't even know what um the, how the human brain functions they don't know it like they are still studying it seriously they don't know it so they don't even know it how can they develop a computer that works like the human brain so that is that is by the way so if we come to that aspect of computer science too, which is called uh, artificial intelligence that is trying to design system to behave like human or act like human or act rationally or behave rationally then they haven't even started because they don't know what intelligence is yet now if you take typical example like a child is born today in let's say two three weeks time the child can look at the mother's face and start smiling yes and if you are any ordinary person the child will not look at you and smile or the child will be crying the mother will come for then the child will stop crying these are things we take for granted but if you are in the fold of trying to make a computer behave like a human being this would be a shock of your life like what did the child think how did the child recognize the mother's face within three weeks or let's say a month and the mother will come for the child the child will stop crying how did this happen scientists don't know they are still struggling around it to know what happened or for example, a child that is like just starting to crawl. Like you, you can experiment this. A child is crawling, just it's it from behind. Shout. Just shout. Either the child either either it will start crying or it will turn to look at where the shouting is coming from. Sometimes if you try to frighten it. Then it will start running. A child just crawling. What is going through the child? That that the child no deaf, or the child knows pain. Why? Why is the child like responding to that shout? How did it learn how to respond to that shout? Scientists don't know. Those who are trying to model computer to behave that way, they are still struggling. They don't know what it is. And if we take a typical example again, let's say um, a child that is like starting to crawl or like just starting to walk, and then uh, just put some barrier between the you and the child, like a table or a chair. And then observe the child as the child gets close to you. 
a child is just about starting to walk if a child is coming and it gets to the table you stand there for a while if the table is too short you realize it will pass under the table and then come to you and then if the table is too short uh, too short if it's too long it will pass under and if the table is too short it will climb it and then come to you and if the table is wide because it will just pass around in this way and then come to you how did the child learn how to overcome those challenges that if it's tall i should pass under if it's short i should walk i should, I should just get over it and if it's wide i should pass around it what type of calculation went through the child definitely it's not like the mother that put it down and said man if it's short pass over it no it's not the mother the child just got those intelligence that scientists don't know where it came from that is another example another thing you can look at is in the field of um art art or like creativity for example let's say writing poem uh, writing a song and um, painting these things are crazy if you say to think of it maybe because we are just used to so we don't see the wonders in them let's say we take Ghana for example how Sarkozy managed to sit right 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 and then get a good song that would be number one in Ghana like it's not easy to explain you can't get Sarkozy here, sit down and then you give me a manual write how you produce your song someone can take that manual follow that steps and produce exact song as Sarkozy it's not possible like how somebody will paint a picture the final product will be there perfect but if we tell him how did he do it write it step by step so that i can take the book follow 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 and get it like how taking card drawing you will take a book and then you follow the steps 90 degrees ahead how people normally do design painting if you tell them they themselves doing the design to sit and write step by step how they produce that final product they will not be able to do it so they will not be able to do it just like those how who normally come out with a good poem it will take him a week two weeks a month or three months or whatever it is to produce that perfect poem if you kind of getting down and say man give me a step by step of how you produce this poem so that i can also pick it and then follow this foot step by step and then produce exact poem how how he can't do it he did a poem but he can't do that step by step and put it down so that somebody else can just pick and say a b c d if you do a first b first d and then c you get the exact poem as this guy produced it's not possible so what it means is these are all natural gifts in people that scientists cannot explain how they get them and the thing with computer or machine is if what the machine you want the machine to do if you cannot write step by step ways of doing it forget it you can't tell computer to do it you can't tell computer to do it if you cannot write step by step this is how the thing is done you can't tell computer to do it or let's say for example how to propose to a lady this is a skills you take for granted but men take a lot of years to learn it and if you call somebody jack you are good at proposing so step by step give me a guide how i can propose how i can also propose to a lady he will not be able to he can explain but you will go and it, it will backfire it will not work if you take if you go say this first 
see this second, see this third. Why if you get there you say hey then the question get the girl says no. You know that instant you have to rethink, which is not part of the steps he gave you. Hey, but if you give that steps to a computer, computer goes and there is a question not already discussed, the computer will get stuck. But if human is given, the human gets there and there has to be some things to go around, he can think and go around it. And so these are things, these are features in human, like those reasoning, like consciousness, awareness. That is what makes you get some emotions and which which affect how you respond to things, how you do things, how you do and then you regret. These are things scientists are not able to describe and then put it down. And until you are able to codify this, you are able to put this down into step by step way of doing it. There is there is no way a computer can be intelligent in than than the human brain and like than human. And so that is that is let's say the the background. So first of all, you are struggling to even know how that child works how that child is able to go over the, the table, how people manage to come out with songs, with poems and those things. And so that is that is how it is. So that is just uh, the beginning of the whole show. So there isn't anything like uh, the computer is taking over anytime soon. We still have a long way to go with the, to, with the human brain. Like literally, if um, if you get if you have in access to internet, you just go. People that actually try, they are actually trying to build the machines. Others compare machine to like uh, they literally see like a mouse is more intelligent than computer, or a computer is just like uh, a one year child. That is the level they think computer is. They, they, the most brainy computer you can think of. They still think it's like a year old child comparative. Like I just even say like a year old child is more intelligent there than the, 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 the most powerful computer on it. So that is it. So people realize this challenge. Like we don't even know what intelligent is. So how can we the Design a computer to behave like uh, like a computer uh, to behave like a human being. So when the whole idea of artificial intelligence started, I think that was around the 1950s. Um, the whole focus was let's design a computer that behaves like human. Keywords here are it behaves like human. It behaves like human. So this this was what artificial intelligence was heading towards. Like this was their their mission or this is their vision to design computers like human that behave like human. So they did they did all research, everything going into it, they realized no 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 man, this is not possible. The human brain is so complex and then uh, somewhere around 1950s 1980 another group of people start proposing no this is not possible we can design computers that behave like human that is not possible so what they wanted to do is to design rather the, instead of designing computers that behave like human, they should rather design computers that behave rationally. So that keyword is very important. Rationally, to design computers that behave rationally. So what's the difference? Computers that behave like human and computers that behave rationally. The key difference is the one that behaves rationally you will have to define what that rationality is so if you want a computer 
to do X, Y, Z. And at the end of the day, the computer is able to do that X, Y, Z. Then the computer is behaving rationally. And you can say the computer is intelligent. But it doesn't mean it's intelligent like human being. <laughs> but for those who say, no, let's develop the computer that behave like human. They still think we have to develop the computers like that behave like human. And their criteria to analyze that computer is actually what is funny. And this is how they do it. To them, that is to those who think computers should uh, be designed to behave like human. To them, if say you bring a computer and then you bring someone and you give them the same question, and then they respond like you interrogate them and then they give answer if you can differentiate between the answer coming from computer and the answer coming from human being if you can't you the one who interrogated you can't differentiate the answer then that computer is as intelligent as human being that was the earlier uh, school of thought from the 1950s coming when the ai started that was the criteria they were using. It's called uh, the Turing test. The name after the I think Turing. He's a scientist in, in the field of computer and then so many areas. He was actually a genius. So that was the test that well, let's say if you have a curtain and then you will sit here, then behind the curtain. There is a computer, there is human being. Like, you would type a question. The two of the, 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 the computer and the person, they are all behind the curtain. Then you would type a question, let's say, through a, a keyboard. Now, they are also replying through keyboard. Now, you don't know to who the question is going, whether it's the computer answering or is the real person answering. So if the answers you get, you can't differentiate. This one came from the computer, this one came from human being. Then that computer is intelligent. So this this was the whole argument, like the school of thought or the major school of thought uh, before the eighties when uh, the idea of rationality came in. And I, uh, that is called the Chinese room test. The Chinese and e, the Chinese room test. So and that is where the rationality came from. The Chinese room test actually argued that no, the computer producing the answer <laughs> doesn't mean the computer is intelligent as human being, and they argue like. The computer is able to produce the answer, but the computer doesn't know what it's doing. But the human being is able to produce the answer, and the human being knows what it's doing. So that brings in the point of consciousness, or let's say understanding, reasoning. So the Chinese room test also came with another scenario like uh, even someone who doesn't know Chinese. If you give him, let's say, a Chinese document, and then you, should, you tell him, let's say, this corresponds to this, this corresponds to this, A corresponds to uh, 1, B corresponds to 2, C corres corresponds to 3. He doesn't know the Chinese word. He doesn't know this. He doesn't know this. A, he doesn't know A. He doesn't know B. He doesn't know C. He knows 1, 2, 3. If you take that same person behind the curtains, and then you send him uh, a the person can bring back can answer with a uh, one if you send him b he can answer with two if you send him c the person can answer with three and computer can do uh, the, the, the same so that difference of knowing what you are doing being able to produce the answer and being able to produce the answer and still knowing what you are doing they see it as a big difference that still separate human being from computer so that is that is how it, it whole came about and then the chinese room test 
also came about and they follow the issue of rationality you just have to decide uh, what you want your computer or your machine or technically called um, intelligent agent uh, whatever device you are building whatever computer you are building whatever machine you are building now you think you want it to be intelligent so that is the intelligent device so you will have to define what if the computer is able or that device is able to do will make the device intelligent so if you take a typical example like um let's say a self-driving car you sit in the car and the car will just take you around you don't touch anything you don't do just straight to your destination there will be traffic lights here and there but the car will still be able to know i've got into a traffic light let me stop the green is on so let me go yes this makes the device intelligent because this is what the device was meant to to do and is doing it exactly as it is but that same car that same intelligent agent in the car if you are in the car and you ask that intelligent agent what was the scores between menu and juventus tonight it will not be able to tell you but if it was a real taxi driver though it's able to drive the car it will still be able to tell you the scores for menu or on the wayside if you see something of interest, let's say you are a tourist and then you ask, eh, what is this? The driver will still be able to tell you, oh, here is Cape Coast, here is Kumasi, or this is um, Karen Kroma statue, this is X, this is X. Though the main thing the taxi driver is doing is the driving, but it has all this intelligence aside the driving but the self-driving car only have intelligent for for driving so this also brought another issue of two ways of looking at intelligence like um general we have the general um, intelligence and then we have the specific intelligence um, and then uh, specific intelligence general intelligence and then specific intelligence so that is they all come under the the, the rationality you have to define what that intelligence is so so it is under the specific intelligence that is where computers are good or let me say some of them are good and in that field you can get computers that are far 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 intelligent than human beings for example if you develop a specific intelligent agent that its purpose is to read weather report like to go around get the data and then produce that weather report to whichever phones or whichever devices people are using that is a specific intelligent device specifically designed to produce that weather report and no human being can challenge it in that field to be able to do it but coming back to the chinese room argument it doesn't know what it's doing and that is the only knowledge it has it doesn't know anything about football going on it doesn't know anything about relationship it doesn't know anything about anything except to produce that weather weather report so that is that is uh, on the angle of uh, artificial intelligence science have the idea they wish they could produce things that will behave like human beings but they don't actually even know how human being behaves that is why they can't quantify it they can't code it to, like they can write step by step down this is how human beings behave if they are able to do it they'll be able to to um 
let's say get a computer that will be able to get that intelligent as human but they are still 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 far away today is 10th like i said that is august 23rd 2018 is 1045 i personally believe um not in the next 200 years can computer take over the human brain i don't think so i don't think so the brain is too complex and science have realized that they know the brain is too complex they are far 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 the computers that are produced and they are able to learn like new things they basically gather information and they'll be literally be able to record those ones. They have a long, long way to go. A long, 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 long way to go. Before they'll be able to finally produce a meaningful machine that behaves like human, they have to know how or why human behave in certain ways, which is very, very difficult. And they acknowledge it. You can Google around it. My net is not helping. We'll have full the resources of those actually in that field say no, it's not possible. It's not possible. Look, uh, Jack Ma, he's a businessman and very ambitious, very optimistic. So those are those are the ways. Those are the ways. I remember. Um, I think some what well, twenty ten or so thereabouts. The then chairman of Google, uh, is this Schmack or something like that. Uh, he also said like somewhere by twenty twenty the whole world will have internet access. But it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah, as at now we still I think around um we still we are still around um fifty percent there about fifty percent there about uh, according to um we social there's a company called we social they normally do their quarterly analysis of internet users sometimes they do it with a hot suit so they are the second quarter of 2018 that was actually where we passed the 50 percent mark of the people on earth who, who have internet, internet access and africa is leading in case of the rate at which people are catching up with with internet hey so that is it uh, i absolutely agree in the next 30 years everything is data everything everything will be data if you really want to go into computing look at that for data 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 if you have a son or a daughter in school and he wants to go into computing let him be focused on data 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 and for now the tools you actually need to be able to survive in that world actually you have to know computer and then you have to know statistics you can't dodge it if you really want to go into data you have to know computer and then you have to know statistics you can't dodge these two you, you have to master them and then that is what will make you like give you a leap into into the future so that is it that is it now for uh, artificial intelligence uh, it might be a terrible research so just last sunday i did my first exams on artificial intelligence but before that i've actually read a lot about the possibility of devices thinking like human and uh, I, I personally believe I did terrible in that exam. I may have to rewrite it again. But it's it's a, it's an interesting for like I I really want to go into yeah artificial. I really want to go into artificial intelligence. I would, my vision is to be a data scientist. So I can't run away from it. So for now that's it. Uh, on this note and time. See you, bye.